Hi everyone! I know we're already in June, which is halfway through the year, but I wanted to talk today about my most anticipated releases for 2020. I was just going through this recently and making a list for myself to keep track of what's coming out and when, because that's actually the kind of thing I do for fun, uh, because I'm strange that way, but I thought it might be a fun video to share with everyone else. So these are going to be in no particular order other than the order that I thought of them while writing them down, but I'm going to start with the most obvious one because I've talked about it a lot already, and that's Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson, which is coming out in November, and that's book number four in the Stormlight Archive. I just did a whole video about my Cosmere reread project that I'm doing ahead of this book coming out, so obviously I'm pretty excited for it, and you can check out that video if you want to know more about my history with the Cosmere and reading Brandon Sanderson, or just general thoughts on that subject. The Stormlight Archive is supposed to get split into two halves, so the first five books will be an arc and then the second five books will be an arc, and this is book four out of five, so this should be kind of like the second to last book in a series. That probably means that a lot of dramatic and exciting stuff will happen and it probably won't resolve in the most satisfying way, but you never know. I feel like in both books two and three of the Stormlight Archive, Sanderson basically immediately answered questions in the books that I thought were going to take the whole book to resolve, and then brought up a whole bunch of other stuff that I didn't expect at all. So I'm kind of seeing that as a pattern, and I'm kind of expecting that that might be the case in this book as well. I'm really looking forward to seeing the cover for Rhythm of War. There is no US cover out yet, although they have released the UK cover. I'm definitely planning that I will probably have to block off a couple days of my life when this book comes out so that I can just read it as quickly as possible. The next book I'm looking forward to is Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty. It's the third book in the Devabad trilogy, so it's the last book after City of Brass and Kingdom of Copper. This is another one I'm really excited for. It's actually coming out at the end of this month, so only a few more weeks. Book two ended with a horrible cliffhanger, so this one is probably going to be intense. I can also tell that this is probably not a book that is going to wrap everything up in a neat little package and have everyone live happily ever after, so I actually feel like a lot of stress internally about whether I'm going to be happy with how this series ends because I've loved it so much. I will admit that I'm kind of afraid that if this book is a letdown it's going to spoil my enjoyment of the whole series. Sometimes I know I shouldn't do this, but if I get too attached to a particular character or outcome and then the author doesn't go that way, even if the way they go is great, sometimes I just feel disappointed, and sometimes reading series that are already finished kind of prevents that from happening, but I started reading this series after only the first book came out, so we'll see. No matter how the trilogy wraps up, I really appreciate what S.A. Chakraborty did with it, which was to create a setting and a world that uses both Islamic mythology and Persian mythology and as well as a lot of other Middle Eastern cultures to make a really complex, rich fantasy world that is fully realized and that isn't just kind of like Arabian Nights, like, oh, this is randomly Middle Eastern flavored. The next one is also coming out in June. It's called The Angel of Crows, and it's by Catherine Addison, who wrote The Goblin Emperor. I've done a review of that. It's one of my favorite books that I read this year. It's a really, really good book, and it's also the only thing that she has ever written, at least under that pen name. She has a few other books, I think, under a different pen name. So the Angel of Crows is going to be a totally different setting, unrelated to the Goblin Emperor. It's just I liked that book so much I'm really excited to see what else she can do. I'll give the description a quick read. This is not the story you think it is. These are not the characters you think they are. This is not the book you are expecting. Well, I'm not sure what book I am expecting, but that's good to know. In an alternate 1880s London, angels inhabit every public building, and vampires and werewolves walk the streets with human beings in a well-regulated truce. A fantastic utopia, except for a few things. Angels can fall, and that fall is like a nuclear bomb in both the physical and metaphysical worlds. And human beings remain human, with all their kindness and greed and passions and murderous intent. Jack the Ripper stalks the streets of this London too, but this London has an angel. The Angel of Crows. So honestly, this sounds so different than The Goblin Emperor, and it sounds pretty weird, but I just really respected her writing from The Goblin Emperor, and I really want to give this book a try. The next book I'll talk about is The Relentless Moon by Mary Robinette Cowell, which is coming out in July. It's the third book in her Lady Astronauts series. 
This series is kind of an alternate history science fiction where a meteorite hit the United States in the years after World War II, causing the planet Earth to have basically accelerated climate change, and this caused all the countries of the world to need to rush the space program, which had already started a little bit earlier in this timeline, in order to get people off the Earth and to go colonize Mars. While telling that story, the books have also dealt with a lot of themes of sexism and racism and also some of the foibles of people and politics and the media. The first two books followed Elma York, who was a pilot who uh, she wants to become an astronaut, and so the first two books followed her, and the third one is apparently going to be following a different set of secondary characters on the moon during the events of the second book. Just for me, I feel like reading the first book after watching the movie Hidden Figures is a really good idea. There isn't a direct relation, but watching Hidden Figures gave me a lot of information about how the early space program worked in actual history, as well as the role that women and black women and people who were computers played in the early space program. My next anticipated release is Harrow the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. This is the sequel to Gideon the Ninth, which I read recently and loved. It was part of my Hugo Awards reading project, and luckily the second one is coming out pretty soon. I think this book was actually supposed to release earlier, but all of the weirdness that's going on right now has caused a lot of dates in the publishing industry to change. I feel like I can't talk too much about this book without giving massive spoilers for Gideon the Ninth. Uh, you can go watch my review of Gideon the Ninth if you'd like to hear more of my thoughts on that but I am very excited to see what happens next in this series, and I'm also thinking that I should pre-order soon because I had this experience where after I read Gideon the Ninth on ebook, I ordered the physical book partly because I really wanted to get a hardcover that had um, black pages, and then I realized that that was only the first edition that was printed with black pages. So I don't know if Harrow the Ninth will have black pages or not, but I'm hoping that if I pre-order and get a first edition, then I will get that. And that isn't my entire reason for buying the book, and it's not the reason I'm looking forward to the book, but I will be very excited if I get it. The next one is also coming out in August. It's The Burning God by R.F. Kuang. This is the third book in the Poppy War trilogy, and I'm not putting these books in order of when they're coming out in purpose. That just seems like where my notes ended up. So I have a really mixed relationship with Poppy War because I read both the first book and second book. I enjoyed both of them a lot, and then as soon as I finished them I would always kind of feel really disturbed and like, oh that was really messed up. But I still think really highly of the series and what it's doing, and I do want to know what happens. It's just I never feel like entirely good for some reason when I finish reading these books. I think probably they're just a little more grimdark than my usual taste, even though a lot of the most horrific parts of them are all things that are drawn from actual human history, which is honestly doesn't really cheer me up. So I'm looking forward to reading this. I will read it when it comes out, but I am also expecting to feel traumatized when I do. The next one is Piranesi by Susanna Clarke, which is coming out in September. So Susanna Clarke is the author of Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell, which I really loved, but it came out when I was like 13, and I think maybe I read it once or twice in my teens, but not since then, and she hasn't published any other novels since then, and this is an unrelated book, so again, kind of like um, the book by Katherine Addison, I'm just really curious to see what else she has in store for us. I'll read the description for this one as well. From the New York Times best-selling author of Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell, an intoxicating hypnotic new novel set in a dreamlike alternative reality. Piranesi's house is no ordinary building. Its rooms are infinite, its corridors endless. Its walls are lined with thousands upon thousands of statues, each one different from all the others. Within the labyrinth of halls, an ocean is imprisoned. Waves thunder up staircases. Rooms are flooded in an instant. But Piranesi is not afraid. He understands the tides as he understands the pattern of the labyrinth itself. He lives to explore the house. Okay. This goes on for a little bit, actually. I'm going to stop reading there. It sounds pretty weird. I just, I really liked her first book. I'm very curious about this. I don't know what to expect. Another book I'm looking forward to, which is coming out in June, is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. 
This is the author of Gods of Jade and Shadow, which I read last year and really, really enjoyed. It wasn't a book that made it to my top books of all time list, but I thought there was a lot about it that was really great. And I feel like Mexican Gothic sounds like it's going to be pretty fun as well. They are advertising it as for fans of classic novels like Jane Eyre and Rebecca, and it has sort of gothic horror vibes set in 1950s Mexico. So I don't really like horror, but I feel like gothic horror is its own category. I really like Jane Eyre and Rebecca. I enjoyed the other book by this author that I read, and this is another one that just really intrigues me. I feel like a lot of the books on this list have sort of a gothic horror Victorian historical vibe, and that's not necessarily something I do all the time. It just, maybe it's a thing this year? I don't know. The last book on this list is Fires of Vengeance, which is the sequel to Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. So I had a very mixed reaction to Rage of Dragons because it was just massively hyped and I thought it was good, but I didn't love it. It sometimes felt like one big fight scene training montage the whole time. But that being said, I do think it was a good book. I do think that it contributed a lot to the genre and I am looking forward to seeing where he takes the series. I feel like there's a good chance that I could like the second book even more than the first one and that it could end up being a series I really enjoy. And I don't know, I think this is just going to be a book that a lot of people are looking forward to. So I definitely do want to read it when it comes out. So as far as I know, those are all of my most anticipated releases for the rest of 2020. And I hope that you enjoyed hearing about them.